The Aerospace Academy is a co-production of the Fairfax Network and the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center. Aerospace Academy. Today you are enrolled in the Paper Airplane Design Lab. Using some simple materials like paper and binder clips, you will test the design of a paper airplane by using the scientific method. All this will take place in one of the coolest classrooms you'll ever be in, the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center, which houses thousands of amazing aviation and space artifacts. The museum's educators and residents host classes and field trips for students on a regular basis. So who better to learn from than one of these experts? Today we'll be learning from educator and residents Tosin Adatoro as she guides us through our exciting experiment. Now before we start, there's a couple things we want you to know. First, in today's lab, our students will be using an activity sheet and a paper airplane template and you can find these same materials online at fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. So while you watch or after the program, you can recreate the same experiment you see here today. Okay, now number two, be sure to pay attention to the key concepts that will appear on screen. They're gonna come in handy as you watch our experiment and if you decide to perform the experiment in your own laboratory. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to the Academy. Our classroom is set, and Tosin, I'm going to hang out back here with the students, and as you ask questions, I'll do my best to get this microphone in front of them before they answer you. So go ahead and start our class. Okay, thanks, Matt. Well, today we're going to talk about balance and stability, center of gravity, and we'll use the scientific method in an experiment using paper airplanes. So let's start off with balance. What exactly is balance? If your younger brother or sister were to ask you, what is balance, what would you say? What would you say? Um, balance is like how you keep steady or how things or two objects are equal. Equal, keeping steady, not falling over, 50-50 are all great ways to explain balance. A lot of sports use balance. Sports like soccer, basketball, football. Why would athletes use balance? What do you think? What do you think? Um, to run, kick, throw, walk. Exactly. Running, kicking, throwing, and just even walking, you need balance. So now that we've talked about balance, let's talk about something else, stability. And that's really important when we're talking about paper airplanes. So we're going to look up here, and we have three figures. And I want you guys to tell me which figure is the most stable. How many people think A is the most stable? Raise your hand. Okay, no takers for A. How many people think B is the most stable figure? Good job. Okay, so how many people think C is the most stable figure? Okay, we have a few takers for C. I'm gonna change this question around a little bit. I'm gonna place an object on each of the figures like so. And we're gonna see what happens and which one is the most stable figure. Okay, now we have the objects on there. I'll ask you the same question again. How many people think A is the most stable figure? Raise your hands. Still no takers for A, okay. How many people think B is the most stable figure? Oh, there's some changes, okay. Now, how many people still think C is the most stable figure? One. That's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give each object a push and we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna push A. Give it a little push. There we go. Now we're gonna give B a little push. Awesome. And then we're gonna give C a little push. Okay, and now we notice that B is actually the most stable figure. And this is a great example of positive, negative, 
and neutral stability. Positive stability is when you have an external force and it pushes on something and it comes back to where it started, okay? Negative stability is when you give it a little push and it keeps moving away from where it started. Neutral stability also moves away from where it started, but it keeps moving and it's not really moving away or coming towards where it started from, okay? So A is negative stability, B is positive stability, and C is neutral stability. Positive stability is what we have in all the airplanes that we get on. We need it to go when it has an outside force to come back to where it started. But sometimes engineers need negative stability, stability like A when they're using acrobatic planes or stunt planes. Matt? Okay, let's take a short break from the classroom to delve deeper into the concept of stability. Student reporter Allie Dawson spoke with a pilot who uses negative stability as he pilots his plane through aerial acrobatics. I'm here with John Karate, who is a docent at the National Air and Space Museum and also a pilot in the Flying Circus. Thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here, Ali, talking about aviation, which is my passion. How does stability affect flight? Well, stability is important early on to be able to establish flight. The airplanes needed to be stable enough to get into the air and to get back again without tumbling. But then as pilots began to explore aerobatic flight, uh, they took steps to make airplanes less stable so they would perform aerobatic maneuvers uh, better. For example, a fellow named Lincoln Beachy, who is known as the father of aerobatic flight, took a popular airplane of the day and removed the whole front end of the airplane. His idea was successful. He was able to do a loop and then he became the most famous aerobatic pilot of the day. I've heard about positive, negative, and neutral stability, but what's the difference? Well, basically positive stability refers to an aircraft if it's displaced from its path to tend to return to that path. That's desirable. Uh, negative stability would be if an aircraft were displaced, it would keep on going in the direction it was displaced, and, and that's not desirable. Neutral stability is where if an aircraft is displaced, it will stay in that displacement, and that's what they strive for in a fighter airplane, so that the airplane will go exactly where the pilot puts it and not tend to fix it or get worse. So aviation really is your passion. Oh yes, I've got the greatest job in the world. You ask any pilot what he wants to be when he grows up, and he's stumped for an answer. Pilots don't have to grow up. Well, pilots might not have to grow up, but we do need to mature our understanding of aerospace concepts. So let's get back to our lesson. Tosin, what's next? Okay, Matt. Well, I have Zach here, and he's actually going to show us something with center of gravity. Hi, Zach. So, what is gravity? The, pull that, the force that pulls us down back to Earth. A force that pulls us down to Earth, exactly. Gravity is a force that pulls everything down. It pulls everything towards a big object. So here we have a cone, and the cone is sitting pretty stable and balanced, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to tip this cone upside down and try to balance it on its tip. Do you think you can do it? Yes. All right, let's try it. Okay. Oh, wow. So why do you think that that happened? All the weight is at the top, and it's going to pull it down. All the weight is at the top. It's heavier at the top, exactly. And what else? What about the shape of it? Uh, the bottom is very small and it doesn't have enough space to support it. Exactly. It has a smaller bottom and it's actually heavier on the top. So this is important when we talk about center of gravity. Center of gravity, you need, it's around a large, where it's bigger and where it's heavier. So you have a center of gravity too. Where do you think that is? Uh, the waist and stomach area? The waist and stomach area, exactly. It's actually different for boys and girls. For boys, it's a little higher, and for girls, it's a little lower. So that's center of gravity. All right, great. So now we know that the center of gravity is a natural force that must be considered when designing airplanes. But what about when you want to control an airplane in flight? Well, any pilot can tell you that when it's time to fly, there are three things that affect a plane's path. Let's talk about how we control an airplane. Well, we do it through the three axes of flight. First, if we move an elevator on an airplane, it makes the nose of the plane pitch up and pitch down. If I move a rudder on an airplane, it makes the nose of the plane turn left and turn right. And if I make the ailerons go up and down on the wing of a plane, it makes the airplane roll left 
or roll right. That's the way we control an airplane. Those are the three axes of flight, and that's our connection to aviation. In case you're just joining us, this is the Aerospace Academy, and we're coming to you from the National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center. The wonderful flying machines in this museum couldn't get off the ground without being balanced and stable, which is why our students are using these concepts to design their paper airplanes. Tosin, what's next? Well, Matt, we're going to start talking about the scientific method. But first off, what is the scientific method and why do we use it? What do you think about the scientific method exactly? Um, I think that the scientific method is uh, something that the scientists use to make experiments. That's excellent. It is very specific steps that we use when we're conducting an experiment. And we're going to use the scientific method today when we build our paper airplanes. So let's start off with that first step, the hypothesis. The hypothesis is when you take an educated guess at what you think is going to happen. So. Our hypothesis states that if the binder clip is placed in the blank of the fuselage, then the paper airplane will fly most accurately through the target. The fuselage is the body of the plane. The next step is actually the control variable. The control variable is something that the scientist is going to keep the same. What can we keep the same? Our paper airplanes. We're going to keep the paper airplanes the same by using a template. So we're all going to fold together and use a template. The next step is called the independent variable. The independent variable is something that we need to change, and we can only change one thing. What can we change in our paper airplanes that does not affect the design of the paper airplane and will affect the way that it flies? What do you think? The placement of the binder clip on the fuselage. The placement of the binder clip on the fuselage, exactly. The binder clip has a weight to it. So wherever we place a binder clip, it's going to change the weight distribution on our paper airplane. So we're going to place the binder clip in the front, the center, and the back of the paper airplane. Great job. The next step is the dependent variable. The dependent variable is something that we're going to observe. What we're going to observe is we're going to take our paper airplanes and we're going to test it by throwing it through a target. However many we get through with it being successful is what we're going to tally on the board and we're going to use that as our results. Then we move on to the next step, which is our conclusion. The conclusion is the summary of all the results. So we're going to take our results and we're going to compare that to our hypothesis and see if it actually matches up. Does it have, always have to match up? No, not really, because your hypothesis just needs to be proved or disproved. So now, let's go ahead and grab our data sheets, write your name on it, and you're going to guess what your hypothesis is. Do you think it's better in the front, the center, or the back? Once you're done writing your hypothesis, we're going to go ahead and grab our templates and we're going to fold using my instructions. Make sure we're all folding together. Matt? All right, while the students fill out the hypothesis section on their data sheets, you can create your own hypothesis as well. Remember, you can get the same activity sheet and paper airplane template that we're using, and you can find it on our website. Now, Tosin will lead us through the folding directions in a minute, and we'll prepare the runway for test flights. But first, let's learn about the brothers who realize that bicycles are similar to airplanes. When it comes to Wilbur and Orville Wright, Dr. Tom Crouch pretty much knows everything. As a curator, he does lots of research, writes books, and is responsible for a vast collection of airplanes and other important aviation artifacts. He says most flying machines can trace their aeronautical beginnings to the Wright brothers. When they looked at the whole problem of the flying machine, they recognized that it really had three parts. You had to be able to build wings that would generate lift that would get you into the air. You had to have a propulsion system that would move you forward fast enough to get into the air. And once you were there, you had to have a way to control yourself. The Brothers 1903 Wright Flyer is the world's first airplane. It hardly flew the length of a football field, but it was a powered, heavier-than-air, pilot-controlled airplane. They did it by solving one technical problem at a time. Control was the one area nobody had given very much thought to. The Wright brothers, on the other hand, 
were bicycle builders and bicycle designers. And they said to themselves, you know, if you think about riding a bicycle, if you think about trying to explain it to say a Martian or someone who's never seen a bicycle, what? You want me to roll down a hill on these two little thin rubber things and I have to balance from side to side and there are these handlebars I have to manipulate and oh yeah, there are pedals I have to pump. You know, it would sound as though you had to be the world's greatest acrobat to ride this thing. But the Wright brothers knew that once you learned how to ride a bike, you internalized it and it became automatic. And they knew that the same thing would be true of an airplane. So Orville and Wilbur Wright did test flights with handmade kites and gliders over the sandy dunes of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Focusing on control, it's as if the brothers imagined a flying machine like a flying bike. You're flying along and you're struck by a wind gust, so this begins to happen. What you want to do is decrease the lift on this side, and that means turn the wingtip down a little bit to the air, and on this side, turn it up a little bit, increase the lift, so you come right back up like this. The Wright brothers were self-made engineers. You'll see that Orville is laying inside a cradle that goes around his hips. And to control wing warping, the lateral motion, he shifts his hips from side to side. And when he does that, he pulls wire through the airplane that puts the twist uh, into the wings. Right next to him, uh, you see the engine. They built the engine themselves. It only develops about 12 and a half horsepower. Not only does everything work, but it works in conjunction. Everything is connected. The machine is almost organic. The Wright brothers were just superb engineers. After the first flight of 1903, the Wright brothers would return to their home in Dayton, Ohio, and perfect their amazing invention. Before we start testing, let me show you how to properly fold a paper airplane. Templates are online, and remember, let's fold together to make sure that our control variable stays the same. First, you start off with line number one. If you turn your paper upside down and roll towards your line, you can use a pencil to help you fold. Make sure your lines are nice and crisp. Looks just like a house. Now, line number two, you'll fold back just like line number one. And you can see your paper airplane starting to take shape. Looks just like a triangle. Line number three in the middle folds opposite from one and two. And then we fold four backwards. Each person should have paper airplane number 44. Now, let's fly. Our runway is clear. We've received clearance from the control tower, and our test pilots from Navy Elementary School in Fairfax County are ready to begin their flights. Tosin, let's go. Okay, Matt, so I'm gonna be over here tallying your results, and the students are gonna have fun, and we are ready for round one where we have our binder clip in the front of the paper airplane. Are you ready? All right, you are clear for takeoff. Oh, our first one is a go, good job. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. That was really close. Clear for takeoff. Oh, just a little higher next time. Clear for takeoff. Oh, so close. Clear for takeoff. Good job, we got another one. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, there we go. Nice Good job. job. See if we can get another one. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, nice try. Clear for takeoff. Just a little higher next time. Clear for takeoff. 
Well, as they continue this round right here, they're going to keep moving things around and changing the variables. But they're going to do a good job as we continue this round. But just keep uh, keep observing here what's happening. They're going to move the clips around through each round, and things will get better and better as we go. Keep an eye on the circumstances, observe how the planes fly, and try to notice the speed of the plane, the lift or height at which it flies, and how smooth it glides through the air. These indicators will show which design is balanced and stable. All right, so now we're, it's time for round two. Are you ready to go? Okay, clear for takeoff. Oh, nice try. Let's see if we can make it this time. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, oh that was really almost. close. Clear for takeoff. Just a little higher next time. Clear for takeoff. Woo, nice try. Clear for takeoff. Let's get it this time. Clear for takeoff. Oh, nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, so close. Clear for takeoff. Oh, that looked like it was going in. Clear for takeoff. Oh, nice try. Clear for takeoff. Good job, we got it. During One each down. round of flights, Tosin is collecting the data, oh, nice tracking how many flights make it through the poster board. Takeoff. Our results will either prove Good or job. disprove the hypothesis. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, just a little more thrust next time. Clear for takeoff. Oh, that was close. Okay, so now we're done with round two. It's time for round three. Let's go. Clear for takeoff. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> Clear for takeoff. Ugh. Um, it happened again. Clear for takeoff. I think there's something going on Don't with the back. Clear Don't for takeoff. Oh. Nice try, but no go. <laughs> Clear for takeoff. Ugh. Nope. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, something's going on. Clear for takeoff. <laughs> Through the hole next time. <laughs> Clear for takeoff. <laughs> Clear for takeoff. Oh, nice try. Clear for takeoff. Nice try. Clear for takeoff. Oh, nice try. Clear for takeoff. As we've gone through this experiment step nice by try. step, have you noticed how the scientific off. method is driving the entire process? It's a consistent Clear method that even professional scientists nope. use to track data while testing and making observations. Nice okay, so this ensures on. that any new knowledge gained is accurate and verifiable. If done correctly, on one on. scientist should be able to follow the same steps as another and come to a similar conclusion. Speaking of conclusions, looks like we're done with round three of our test flights and ready to view our results. Tosin, what do you have over there on the board? Okay, Matt, now we are done with our testing and we have all our results and we're gonna look at this. We had a total of 16 students test their paper airplanes. So for each flight, we have 16. And we look at it and in the front, we had a total of six successful flights. In the center, we had two successful flights. And in the back, we had zero successful flights. Pretty sad. So now let's look at this and compare it to our hypothesis. We take our results for our conclusion. We're gonna summarize and compare it to our hypothesis. Our hypothesis was our educated guess. And it stated that if the binder clip is placed on the blank of the fuselage, then the paper airplane will fly most accurately through the target. And here for us, we have the front of the airplane. So if our binder clip is placed on the front of the fuselage, then the paper airplane will fly most accurate, accurately through the target. So let's look at why this happens. Now, with the binder clip in the front of the paper airplane, there's a lot of weight there. So our center of gravity, remember, is closest to where we have most of our weight. So our weight is centered in the front of the plane. We also have another um, force called center of lift. Center of lift is always in the middle of our paper airplane. Center of lift and center of gravity are not in the same location. So it's really not a balanced plane. But look at the center. So let's look at this. The center has a binder clip in the middle. So our center of gravity and our center of lift are both located in the middle of the plane. This is actually a better plane. It's a more balanced plane. Now the back, with the binder clip in the back, we have a lot of weight in the back. So now 
our center of gravity is more to the back and that's why it had that nose dive kind of thing. So look at this. We actually hypothesized that it would be in the front. That's what our hypothesis said. But it shows, I mean in the center, but it shows that it's in the front. How many people guessed that the front would be the more stable plane? Okay, three people. How many people guessed the center would be more stable? Okay, and actually the people with the center scientifically are right, even though our data didn't show it. How many people guessed the back would be the most stable? No takers for the back? Okay, so even though majority guessed that the front would be, or the center would be the more, more stable, our data didn't show that. Why do you think our data or our results did not show that it was more stable? What do you think? Uh, because um, when uh, humans are doing the experiment, they're not exactly perfect. Exactly. And so you get human error. Exactly. Nobody is perfect. So there is exactly what we call human error. The way you throw it is not the way that she's going to throw it. So you can't really control the way that you throw. But looking at this, science tells us that the center should be the most stable. So now we've done our data, we've done our results, we've hypothesized. What do you think, Matt? So while the kids were having all the fun, you were doing all the heavy lifting over there, having to keep track of everything. So we've got all this great data, but now what do we do with it? That's a good question. So we look at all this data, and a great way to show data is to actually graph it. So I'm going to get one of you guys to come on up and help me graph. So we're going to graph the front, the center, and the back. And they have a blue, a green, and a red pen right there. So I'm going to guide you towards graphing. So for the front, we had a total of six successful flights. So you're going to go all the way up to six, and you're going to draw a bar graph. Awesome job. Great job. So she went all the way up to six, and she shaded, and she made her bar graph. Next, we're going to draw the center graph, and that's going to be two. Great job. And with the back, we don't really have anything, so it's going to stay blank. So why is a bar graph good to, to show our data? Why do you think it's good to show our data? Because you can see big differences. You can see big differences and compare the difference between a number of successful flights in the front and a number in the center, number in the back. Awesome. It's a great way to look at things differently. Matt? Great job, you guys. Not only have Tosin and our students proven their hypothesis as correct, but they've used the scientific method to ensure accuracy. With the knowledge from the results, they can design the best and most flight-worthy paper airplane possible. Hey, but don't take our word for it. Design your own plane, and you can be the test pilot. Hey, good luck with your flights. Thanks for joining us, and congratulations. You've passed this lab of the Aerospace Academy. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Matt Fetters. Thank you.